This is my interview with Mina Chan, who spends her time between New York and Seoul. She's a global Korean American new media artist, scholar, and educator at MICA. Um, so she does political pop art uh, that she calls polypop, and she takes influence from global media and pop culture to create work that uh, intersects politics and uh, art in subversive and provocative ways. Um, we talk a great deal about this um, intersection between agitprop and uh, propaganda that she uses in a pop cultural way to um, address the, you know, the still unre unresolved war in Korea using media, um, kind of dealing between the, the biopolitical notion of North and South Korea and then the mediated representations of both. Um, between the work that she has in the Through the Mesh exhibition, Missiles Goodbye, and what that signifies, and also other in interventionist work that she did uh, during the pandemic, like Eat Choco Pie. So Mina is provocative, she is thoughtful, and I hope you enjoyed this interview. I'm trying to think, you know, some of the latest news, the, what I've been really happy about is knowing that uh, I think the name is Ji Young is the first Korean American Muppet in Sesame Street. Really? <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. So, you know, part of it is like, you know, how um, there's information dissemination right there for you, mm -hmm. you know, in popular culture that will have probably greater impact than, you know, what politicians try and do when they work on anti-racist propaganda mm -hmm. right? yeah. in response to racist propaganda, I guess. Um, but it's always uh, a interesting uh, push and pull relation, right? Whether it's about divided uh, politics or ideologies or even class warfares um, between countries or countries divided. And I'm thinking when I had that piece created, Missiles Goodbye, mm -hmm. the push and pull and the intended tension and arrest reflects sort of not only the state of current Korea, contemporary Korea or Korea's, but our split existence currently, our fragmented existence. And you mentioned, you know, what is the kind of way in and thinking about bio and information and contours of a nation and biotechnology, information technology and the contours of a nation. And that piece is interesting in that it promotes a possibility of saying goodbye towards uh, military wars, uh, armistice conflicts, because we're saying goodbye to the missile at the same time, we don't know if it's um, also, you know, looking at the missile uh, rising, you know, being set off, right? So whether, this whether, kind of- whether, it, whether, it, whether it's going away or whether it's going somewhere. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. And so this very ambiguous um, unknown moment and the tensions that come with, and the suspense that comes with not knowing is I think that's sort of the fabric of the way in which we exist today. And that's why propagandas of fear and terror, you know, could come in and play such a big role in our constitution. Um, Korea's contour, you know, if you look at the map, looks like a rabbit, it's a peninsula. Mm -hmm. Throughout its history, 
the mapping, the outline of Korea has always changed. It expanded beyond and contracted. If you look, think about the influence of Korean culture, it's quite global mm -hmm. currently. So you can't really outline, you know, and see this contouring. And the contouring itself is a way of mapping or, you know, in, in terms of cartography, containing what can be um, a cultural expansion mm -hmm. of identity of country. And if you look at the peninsula, it looks like a rabbit, you know, in its silhouette. And that is what the Japanese would, um, during colonization, would say, you know, Koreans are a fearful rabbit, you know, mm. that needs to be dominated. And Koreans would then in propaganda fill in like this warp tiger <laughs> <laughs> and say, we are the Asian tigers, right? the nation of Asian tigers. And um, the Asian tigers play itself out and the Olympics, you see them as mascots, you know, the summer Olympics first, and then even uh, the white tiger in um, the winter of Pyeongchang Olympics. And so somehow information, when I say, you know, there is the, how expansive is the information dissemination mm -hmm. and how much of it is embodied versus disembodied. Um, we have uh, Korean politics based on information uh, that can help with uh, democratizing, mm -hmm. you know, people's voice become, you know, very important with social media. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the method of, you know, expanding information and, and collecting information has then been used to create better politics and governance. Um, at the same time, uh, forced indoctrinated uh, propaganda is also used, and this would be in the case of North Korea. Mm -hmm. But they do allow certain media to come into North Korea so that the citizens would feel not so isolated, you know? The thing about knowledge and uh, desire for, you know, human desire, this is where the bio comes in. I think uh, biologically, the fact that uh, humans desire questioning, humans desire like food, you desire education, you desire to know, uh, to feel empowered, you know, even in a state that is um, highly, uh, you know, a totalitarian society or a hermit kingdom. North Koreans have great knowledge of the outside world more than we like to um, accept. And it is this permission, the government does allow some uh, proctoring of information to come in. Mm. And currently it is, the, it is acceptable in both North and South Korea, it really depends on you know, who's uh, running these countries, but the kind of communication that's been going on between North and South um, Korea, especially through the uh, defectors mm -hmm. communities have been actually the, one of the most important steps mm. in uh, unification, real mm -hmm. true unification. The fact that there are North Korean um, defectors in South Korea uh, or even outside of Korea that they uh, work quite um, intensely to continue communicating with North Koreans, their families and friends. And they represent a new kind of Korea that although a bit under radars, they are, you know, very patriotic uh, Koreans that has a different uh, sort of working mechanism of communication and uh, connection that I think the you know governments really are not working at that level. So how does my work actually inform this or is taking that kind of information and using it? Mm -hmm. The 
work that is sent into North Korea, you know, is um, importantly done through the North Korean Defectors Society in South Korea. Mm. And so, you know, I, I provide, but I'm also collaborating with North Korean defectors in South Korea directly. I'm working with them. And they are trying to open up North Korea or just at least communicate ahead of time because, um, you know, it's called uh, Pyongyang Spring instead of mm-hmm. Arab Spring, mm-hmm. a kind of internal implosion. Yeah, within the country where the information just um, is pretty widely spent that, you know, sent, sent with the, amongst the citizens that there is an uprise of the government. Um, and that's a kind of prediction that a lot of, um, you know, international political science people have written about and, and it's a matter of time, you know, is what, what is the state, what, how do we define unification, which is as vague as, you know, how do we define, you know, the contours of Korea today? Mm. Um, but it, it is a matter of time and it's coming and it's placed in arrest because we have an existing war right. and it is a frozen war. So it's quite interesting that global um, politics affect how our Korean experience is actually just kind of frozen in time. You know, we can't have a full experience. And a lot of the media stuff, a lot of like, you know, the film, New Wave, all of that, you know, there's something very kind of, you know, artificial about the expression that comes out of Korea. It's either um, paranormal or, you know, peaked artificial, you know, experience of Korea that is shared. Mm-hmm. Uh, parasite to Gangnam style to pop idols and and um, I think it reflects a great deal of that you know the the fact that we are continuously in this suspense period we can never have a full embodied experience of ourselves as a national identity and. So- if I can ask, yeah, is that um, so? How do, how do you think that the, and I'd say largely uh, South Korean, you know, experience because you know where you're you're kind of having this conversation with the you know with North Korea, is that what do, what do you think the difference is, if any, is with the with the with the life on the street within the North Korean, I mean the sort of South Korean nation state, you know, is versus the mediated you know representation of it, you know, and, uh, you know, how do these, how do these contrast with each other? Yeah. As you were just saying, you were saying the representation of K-pop and, you know, the, the. Yeah, there is, um, you know, there is, it's so North Korean versions of all of those things Mm. and, uh, comes, it's rooted from Kayo Korean, um, music. Um, I believe that North and South Korea are very similar. Mm. That might be radical for a Westerner to understand this, but if you look at sort of the extremity of both countries' national uh, thrust, nationalistic uh, expressions, whether South Koreans are fanatic, devil's red soccer fans, Mm -hmm. or North Koreans are, you know, parading in their mass games, arirang, you know, um, cultural expression and propaganda, you know, gathering. They they have a very similar way of kind of massively mobilizing and performing their nation. Mm. So in that respect, it's very similar. When there is a... um, you know, we could say, you know, what are the ideological differences or the political, you know, differences? Mm-hmm. 
you know, communism, capitalism, you know, democracy, and, um, you know, the sort of the totalitarian, this is a kind of, um, it's a monarchy, you know, yeah. the Kim regime is a monarch. And, you know, there is a great level of theatrics that goes on on both sides that I feel is quite mirroring each other. Mm. So prior to the split, the, you know, the colonization and the Korean peninsula that always changed the appearance of its contours was always split. There were, you know, different ancient kingdoms. It was, you know, the, every time it, there's a kind of unification it's a momentary um you know part of history or, you know of some form of adaptation of other languages you could see within korean history the great influence was the last dynasty was on dynasty and north koreans like to refer themselves as which was on dynasty and chose on people you know, referencing back to a, a dynastic period in order to create the legitimacy of the current dynastic, you know, um, world that they've created and support. But if you look at the impact of Confucian uh, doctrination mm -hmm. prior to, you know, uh, the kind of independence that was born in, through Japanese colonization. And I say that because modernization occurred simultaneously with the occupation. And Western ideas also came in. And therefore the kind of uprise and protests and rise for independence from Japanese colonization um, occurred with a kind of embedded seed of Western ideas for independence. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Korea's, you know, history of being threatened, um, disembodied, you know, when you're threatened, your, your agency is not clear, right? Because you have the external forces. That's and thinking, and yeah. thinking of this, you know, it, um, German unification comes to mind. Yeah, you know, so this is this is yeah. one is this maybe a, a little bit better um, case study to consider when thinking about the future yeah. of Korea. Yeah, I think that there, you know, um, what what is unification? What will it be? You know, is it just cooperation? Is it corporation? Or um, when I think about the defectors who are North Korean refugees and South Korean as South Korean citizens. Mm -hmm. And they are the agent, true agents of change. Sure. Right. They are the primary agents of change currently. When I think of that, you know, what do they desire? Do they desire to acclimate or do they desire to change? I think they're changing. Mm. You know, this is very kind of the unspoken uh, situation of these defectors, but they are definitely the first level of real embodied change. They themselves are embodying and have lived both histories simultaneously. So my mother comes from the North, you know, mm. my father was from the Northern region as well, but he's a little bit older. So it was still United Korea when, um, he was born, but my mother was born in the North and mm. came through a steamship uh, to the South. Right. But that was, you know, she was fleeing to the South. And so this, the steamship was, is the American steamship that was helping people flee with the, the war that was going on. And the current president also is from the North. Mm. Yeah and also rode the steamship, <laughs> American, yeah, yeah. yeah, US steamship. <laughs> yeah. They have one in California left of all the fleet. Really? It's quite interesting, yeah, that you could visit and yeah. see what it was like um, how many years ago. So I'm trying to like, you know, how much of the information that 
because you're trying to do an exhibition about you know what is information what is a nation yeah. right the relationship right, between right. information and, and nation right and then also you know what how did how do these intersect and say for example like um something something as simple as the you know the mediation of of um of a food subject you know the say for example you know you're you're having you know eat a choco pie.com and that just the matter this this commonality of of this kind of you know absurd little chocolate pie you know almost like a moon yeah. pie in america and that's and that sort of thing as something where we can kind of maybe find a little bit of of commonalities like you know you like this i like this you know and almost the food is a kind of medium to you know, uh, mm -hmm. to maybe maybe talk about unification. In other words, well, we'll we could come together over choco pie, you know. That's true. That's why yeah. it's eat choco pie together. But it's also about the fact that that has been the number one smuggled good into North Korea, mm. manufactured okay. in South Korea. So yeah. choco pie, which is like Twinkie in America, right? Right. And it was so funny. Right? I found them in the UAE. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, When I was when I was over there, yeah. Yes, that's right. That's right. Yeah. So choco pie was, you know, it's like a post-war um, food. You know, it's like what you they learned how to make in 1974. I they there were other versions, and there is North Korean choco pie too. Mm. But um, choco pies were shared at the Kaesong Industrial Complex uh, when there was a labor force, North and South Korean laborers were working mm -hmm. together in a factory in Kaesong, which is uh, closer to the DMZ in North Korea. And rather than being able to say thanks with money, they were able to give choco pie and then it hit the black oh. market quite immediately. And it's one choco pies with three bowls of rice. So it has quite the currency. Oh. Wow. And, and, and it was, so it was so irony, so ironic that I could also get get one as a as a dessert at the North Korean restaurant in Dubai. Yes. <laughs> <That's very laughs> nice. Well, you know, it's supposedly Putin's most favorite really? snack when he has some yeah meeting the tables of choco pies and oh. and even amongst the choco pies, you know, which one's more fluffy and, you know, in North Korea, the Orion one versus the Lotte one, you could get more. You know, they swap more uh, the Orion one, which is a little more hefty, yeah. is the has more value. Mm. Right. And so choco pie is has become a cultural symbol of exchange and communication. Like it's mm. about eating, but it is communication. And so when I shared it, because a lot of choco pies were sent for helium balloons over mm. the DMZ into North Korea, as well as going through China. And a lot of kind of smuggling. And if you see this film called Joint Security Area about mm. a brotherly friendship right at the DMZ and the um, that area between the soldiers, one thing they do is the choco pie eating. And more recently, when a North Korean um, soldier ran through the DMZ, was shot several times, woke up mm. in South Korea. First mm -hmm. thing he said was, can I have a choco pie? Now, Odeon <laughs> gave him a life life um you know time worth of pies he could have for free right as as kind of defecting and surviving but the choco pie which is like the muppet it's just a like a common you know it's a confectionery but it's a, just something in popular culture it's a for consumption and um it has greater value than you know what to countries, you know, trying to communicate can do. Mm -hmm. And the eating choco pie together uh, was dedicated when I showed it and put on biannual and I was, you know, sponsored by Odeon Company and had a hundred thousand choco pies for the mm -hmm. audience to eat. It was dedicated to uh, North Korean defectors in Korea. Mm -hmm. It was meant for them to come out and eat choco pie and when it was shown at the Ethan Cohen gallery it was just to share a different kind of narr narrative and that you could taste North Korean desire okay so you're right it's like food is when we consume it it is information and um it was meant for healing the idea of healing then we have um you know people in health say, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's chocolate. 
yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's sugar you know like yeah. um yeah it's it's a medium that heals rather than than agitates you know but nevertheless it still questions oh yeah yeah i grew up eating chocolate pie that's, mm. that's the other one so it's definitely as a 70s um you know, child, that's one of the things that I grew up with, so. Well, I, I, I enjoyed experiencing one in, in Arabia. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So <laughs> maybe I, let me, let me go to, but it became a, a, a digital online. Yeah. Eat chocolate pie together. Yeah. So I got to make these wrappers, you know, the packaging. Mm. So there's the unification flag, there's love. I got to put in, you know, a little bit of like, um, you know, black, this is for sharing, but it had, it's, you know, it's darker sharing yeah. icon. And then, um, I got to put in, you know, stuff that matters over here too. Yeah. So, so did this wind up getting, you know, much, uh, awareness penetration into North Korea? This was actually for during the, um, the height of the pandemic, mm. Asia society, um, triannual requested because you know we weren't able to have the actual physical chocolate pie sure. installation at the lincoln center because you can't really ask people to come out mask off and of eat. course sure so we de decided as a initiative to go online and it raised funds um for the korean american covid uh it was hmm. korean american foundation covid 19 action fund brilliant so we raised 50 Five thousand dollars, I think, in a month, just wow. by people interacting with this interface. So every time you send you you send one, you consume it, you share it with another person. That raised two dollars, and so that you know it was covered on the peninsula. It's just a website, yeah. digital art piece, but it's using the contents of you know not just the kind of work that I was I've been doing, but it's using the contents of what matters as a communication device or cultural mm. object of our time right and um well, I think share eat peace those are some of the themes that are used yeah. in the packaging yeah I, so I you could still go there eat chocolate pie together oh, okay cool. yeah fantastic mm -hmm. i think the one thing is i think that you know you're kind of using the kind of using the contours of the net to to you know to look at the contours of the nation i think that's really interesting Thank you. And it actually, if you go to this site, you'll see the Korean Peninsula. Mm, yeah. And the Missiles Goodbye is right there. You know, it's about being in the place. It's not about being above looking down. Like sure. in the website, yeah. you see the contours of North and South Korea together as one country. Yeah. It's about what happens when you're inside the country and what, it, what are the kinds of communications um, that you're having between North and South Korea, Yeah. right? Yeah. If you're standing right at the DMZ, what are you, what are you saying? Yeah, you're- are you saying hello or are you saying goodbye? <laughs> exactly, in, in, in other words, you're, 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 yeah. you're, cre you're, you're creating these, uh, these discursive trajectories that are a little bit ballistic in shape. Very nice. Thank you. I welcome yeah. your writing after this okay. conversation. So. Yeah. Well, actually, this uh, what what happens is that uh, we can expand on this a little bit because th this will be uh, this will be uh, trans and this will be in the reader next year. So that's good. Thank so anyway. okay. But you know Thank what? Thank you. Yeah. Thanks yeah. so much. And um, you know, thanks so much for talking with us. And uh, I think this has been a fantastic conversation. So thank you. Thank you.